A Nightmare on Elm Street follows a group of friends who are tormented by a disfigured man in their dreams. It isn't too long before they realise that if they get killed by this man in their dreams, they also die in real life, and they have to figure out a way to stop this terrifying dream demon before they fall asleep. So this film was directed by Wes Craven, and it stars Heather Langenkamp, Amanda Weiss, Sue Garsha, John Saxon, and Johnny Depp. So A Nightmare on Elm Street turns 40 this year, and now seeing as it is October, we are into spooky season, I thought what better way to celebrate than to re-watch and review every single film in this franchise. So keep your eyes peeled, it will be sporadic just over the next few weeks, just over the course of October, I will be dropping my reviews of all of these films randomly, there's not going to be any pattern, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But today we are starting at the beginning with Wes Craven's original A Nightmare on Elm Street. If you're watching this video, you don't need me to tell you how good this film is, but I'm going to anyway. And that concept, I mean, it is just immortal. Having to stay awake because if you die in your dreams, you die in real life. That is so cool. It is scary. It is creative. It creates a real overwhelming sense of like a ticking time bomb because it's like you can't stay awake forever. You've got to figure out how to sort this out before you end up getting picked off yourself. It's a really great setup. And then not only that, but the creative freedom that comes from that concept. Because dreams don't have to make sense, they're basically just giving themselves carte blanche to do just whatever they want. Like you can have a goat running around a giant factory and you don't question it. You can have maggots coming out of your guts and you don't question it. You can have arms that stretch out across an entire street, you don't question it. You can have a bathtub turn into a giant body of water and you don't question it. It's just because there's so much that you can do with dreams that it doesn't have to make sense. You can just literally do anything that you want. So that makes you a really creative and inventive film. And that's the best part is that they capitalize on that. They have a bunch of really weird wacky shit happening in this film. And it all works just because that concept just gives them so much freedom. The characters are surprisingly all likable and quite funny. You've got that four letter word joke, which I find quite funny in an immature way. And then you have this really sincere line of dialogue from Nancy that really stood out to me on this most recent rewatch where she's looking at herself in the mirror and she goes, oh, I look 20 years old. I was like, fuck. It's hilarious. And Nancy Thompson is one of the most resilient and resourceful final girls of all time. She's played wonderfully by Heather Langenkamp and it's no question as to like why she's become a horror icon just because she's so resilient and resourceful she doesn't take any shit you actually feel like you're never watching her and thinking oh you're so stupid or anything like that she really grabs this situation by the balls and just does everything in her power to stay alive robert england gave birth to one of the most iconic one of the most twisted one of the most demented horror villains of all time with Freddy Krueger. Freddy is one of those villains that is, he's unbelievable. He manages to be so horrible, so sick, so depraved. Like he's, he's a child murderer for Christ's sake, but he's also so funny and so witty and so much of a smart ass that you can't help but like him. It's that perfect blend of scary and funny. And this film alongside Dream Warriors, I think gets that blend perfectly because you're constantly intimidated, but you're constantly entertained by him. He's, he's brilliant. You don't need me to tell you how great of a villain Freddy Krueger is, but I will because he's awesome. I also realized on this most recent rewatch how well paced this film is. There's a perfect balance of plot development, character growth, alongside scares. So it never feels like there's a lull with the characters. It never feels like they're not being progressed along. It's just scary stuff, but it also never feels like there's a lull with the scares. It doesn't ever feel like the characters are just dragging their feet or anything like that. It's really a good balance. And that is because it kind of, it has to be because these characters at first obviously don't know that going to sleep is lethal. So these characters, they just go to sleep. It's night time. So that just gives way, gives them a perfect excuse to have a really creative, cool, scare dream sequence. And speaking of those dream sequences and the scares, 
The practical effects and kills in this film are insane. I cannot get over some of the shit that they did for this film. And I'm not even talking about stuff that's like overly visually ambitious. I'm just talking about creativity. So for example, Tina's death. What they did, I believe, was that they built an upside down set. So they would have the actress for Tina basically rolling around on the floor, but they would film it all upside down. So it looked like she was being dragged along the roof and they just have an actor sitting there on the roof, like strapped down to the roof as though he was on the floor. It's just really creative shit that they did. And you're just watching it and you're like, damn, this all still holds up. Obviously you have Freddy pushing through the wall above Nancy's bed, which I think is just awesome. It's one of the most acclaimed practical effects of all time. It's just one of those ones where it's just like, you actually have in the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, the CGI version of that. And it's just shows how much better the practical effects look because that is such a cool effect. And then Nancy actually knocking on the wall after it. Genius little touch. Then you've got Glenn's death, which... <laughs> <coughs> Fuck. And then there's stuff like Glenn's death, which you still watch and you see that blood, just gallons and gallons of blood just spitting from the bed up onto the roof and then just rolling around on the roof. It's just like, you still look at that and you're like, holy fuck, that is so cool. It's safe to say that practical effects are just so much better than CGI. Obviously, I'm not saying anything that anyone hasn't heard before, but like, my God, you just watch this film today, 40 years later, and you're just like, wow, that is so cool. And lastly, before I forget to mention this, Charles Bernstein's score is so cool. It's so synth heavy. I love just how creepy, but also groovy it is in parts. Like when Nancy's running through the hallways at school when she's asleep. So I really love Charles Bernstein's score. And I think it's worth mentioning because I don't feel like I hear it get talked about quite as much as other scores like Halloween or Tubular Bells from The Exorcist, but it's terrific. It's up there. And as far as negatives go for this film, I have one, but it's one big sore thumb of a negative and it's the last maybe three minutes of this film i'm talking every little aspect of filmmaking here just went completely wrong so you have nancy's mum that gets killed by freddy and she like sinks into the bed and then they catch on fire and she puts out freddy and all of a sudden her dad leaves and she like turns around and doesn't face freddy and then freddy turns into like a, a bowl of blue lasers or something and then she walks out the front door and her mum's still alive and then she gets in the car with all of her friends who are still alive and then it drives off and they start panicking for some reason which i don't really know why because you can see it's freddy's colors on the outside but it's not on the inside and then a dummy gets dragged through the door and then it cuts to credits it's just it's incomprehensible whatever happens at the end here it is one of the worst endings to one of the greatest films of all time. Uh, obviously, again, I'm beating a dead horse. I'm not saying anything that anyone hasn't heard before, but good God, if they had have stuck the landing, like, or even remotely stuck the landing, if they had have landed on one foot, if they had have put one toe on the platform, then this would have just been a near perfect film, but my God, they shit the bed. So overall, A Nightmare on Elm Street is one of the best horror films of all time. It's one of my favorite horror films of all time. It's one of my favorite films of all time. It's one of the best films of all time. It's filled with iconic imagery. It has an amazing villainous performance from Robert Englund. It has a really fun, likable cast of characters. The practical effects and kills are next level. A Nightmare on Elm Street is top notch. Thank you for watching my review on the original A Nightmare on Elm Street. Be sure to keep an eye out just over the next few weeks. I'll be dropping the rest of the reviews of this series, starting with Freddy's Revenge, obviously. That'll come out pretty soon. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to keep watching through all these films and reviewing them because I really love them so much. Um, be sure to join me. Let me know what you think of this film, and I'll see you all later. Bye.